Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. Welcome, everyone. We have a fascinating conversation in store for you today. This is Lowell Johnson, who has been to Telos, and he has met Lemurians, Telosians. He's going to share that story and, oh, so much more. Hi, Lowell. How are you? Welcome. Loren, good morning. Um, it's a nice day where I am. Thanks for selecting this particular wedge of time. But yeah, the weather's gorgeous. And uh, it's not Costa Rica, of course. Uh, but let's say I'm in a warmer climate than many. Yes. And so this is a story that takes us to Mount Shasta. We're going to hear how you met the Lemurians and what happened. That story is out there on YouTube. And we're going to go into some details but first, we want to hear about, in, in, a, in a nutshell, if you can, your awakening. I mean, how did you come to raise your vibration and expand your consciousness? What were you doing before that? And how did you get here? Oh, uh, wow. I'm a Capricorn, so there's no simple answer to this question. I, you have to go back and uh, understanding now um, what I know about myself. I can tell you that the trigger happened in December of 2015. I had a TIA, if you know what such a thing is, it's a mini stroke. I had um, enough blockage between my carotid artery and where that meets the brain, where someone who's been on the planet for 60 plus years, that's typical to get a buildup. Um, 30 to 40% just healthy. But not when it's 85%. And um, I was suffering some side effects that I didn't understand. Um, and yet they were a troubling for someone whose body has always taken care of itself all my life. Really, it's um, I, I haven't had to rely on doctors much, uh, but I've been a sovereign being since the beginning. I came into a divorced family. I was four years old. My dad had three kids and got custody of, you know, things would, that wasn't normal in the 50s. Um, but I chose my scenario so that I didn't rely on my parents much. Whatever I was here to do, I was here to do. And along the way, it would reveal itself. It wasn't that I wasn't conditioned by church and all the other things that we are in society. Um, and your life is designed that way. Um, succeed in business and get a house, raise a family. Um, those things started to be more interesting when I got into my late 20s. By then, I had been independent most of my life. When I was 18, moved out of the house and you know, found my way. Um, lots of lessons in there. And somehow ended up in hospitality management. Well, I totally understand now. I'm a service to others being here. So I got to play it out. Um, so I had a lovely life um, running hotels, resorts, non-gaming casino facilities. I loved it. I lived in nine different states. Um, and after a while, you know, you re kind of reflect back on your circumstances and you find that a lot of your friends stayed like we all did, raised their families in the same areas. And, you know, here we go. We just perpetuate that life that's what they chose I didn't choose that I chose to kind of let intuition take me from place to place um, and in the end learn more about myself and what's in all of us and there are phenomena that are taking place the discussions when it comes to me and people's level of interest because going to tell us was a miraculous thing. Um, and I'll be happy to tell the story again and again. What's more important for people to understand about what happened that day is I was having a multidimensional experience. It played out 
in Shasta, which is magical to begin with. And the Lemurians that had been there for a long time revealed themselves to me for reasons I understand better now. Uh, but it, um, that isn't the magic. Going to tell us is magical. Don't get me wrong. That's not the magic. The fact that I can go to other dimensional places, including Telos, if I choose to, are now within my abilities in your realm. And here's the good news. So is everybody else. You have to find that alignment to make sure that your vibration matches that what's around you. And we yeah. are already dipped into the fourth dimension. So stepping over into it is very simple for those of us whose chakras are open and aligned and you are connected because we carry light. This is one of the things I'm going to repeat every time I get an opportunity to do, because in my opinion, it's the most important thing for people to understand about themselves. And you carry light to plant to help Gaia. It's part of your role to help the universe evolve. And so as a light worker, I don't go to Shasta seeking something from the mountain. It's always an energy exchange, believe me. And I get as much as I give, but I'm a light worker. I'm supposed to go there and plant my light to assist that connection from the higher realms here. My job is to pull that light in. And everywhere I go, I leave those things behind. The more I do that, the more I see energetic portals and Shasta everywhere. So did you go to Shasta after you said December of 2015, mm -hmm. you had your, like a mini stroke. Is mm -hmm. that where you saw an acceleration in your awakening or these abilities to feel energy? What happened there? Did you have a near death was, experience? I don't believe it happened then, but there are certainly questions about two times when I was younger when there were incidents and uh, I lost consciousness, uh, ended up you know, once on the couch at home after um, I had fallen off a Tarzan rope, unbeknownst to me, my hands just slipped and the next thing I knew was at, how, at home on the couch. I, I've, I have some friends that I want to go back and look at um, perhaps whether those were in fact NDEs, don't know. And, uh, there was another one when I was at a birthday party. We were grade school kids playing outside too hot. You know, I'm a Swedish kid. We don't deal with the sun a lot. Um, and I lost consciousness that day. I ended up at home in bed. I could tell the sun. But who knows what happened in between or what connections were made. I, I want to be able to speak to that. And I hold out that it's absolutely positively uh, possible. Yeah. Um, Another question is, did your, did, how was your life after those experiences? Was there any amnesia? Was there any disorientation? None whatsoever. You just, okay, all of a all sudden right. your recall has opened to realms that you just don't understand where this information comes from. I had been consulting, um, doing some work at a casino in Louisiana. And there were a couple of members of the executive committee that could, I could have these level of conversations with. Um, one was our director of compliance and she couldn't have been sweeter. Uh, she led me to a few books that she was interested in reading and you know, she was moving down the right path. Her awareness was triggering her to seek you know, things that um, are a little beyond my comprehension, but certainly not beyond probabilities. I, I had answers for her that I didn't understand where they came from. Mm -hmm. It took me about a year after that began. And that was probably 2017, 2018, where I'm starting to feel I'm supposed to be doing something else. And there's just something inside of me that's just hungry to really touch spirit. So ayahuasca journeys and any way I can touch spirit, I need to know it for myself. So none of these were recreational purpose. They were spiritually um, driven because there was something unsatisfied within myself that I just need to get answers to. Church didn't respond. 
Uh, and believe me, I, had, I was an elder in the church. I grew up in a Protestant church and ended up as a Methodist and um, went on mission trips around the world and spent my time serving others. Um, but holy cow, there is much more to Earth's cyclical um, process and where she is in the cosmos today. I look at the timing of all of this and although it seems February is a strange time of year, somebody pointed out recently that it's really the end of a cycle. Really, February is the end of winter conditions. And now you're stepping into regrowth. Days are getting longer. Sun is more exposed. So if you think of it in that perspective, <laughs> February 22nd is a different kind of solstice. I can't kind of put my finger on what the alignment is, but there is an alignment that's about to take place here. And it hasn't been that there haven't been before. It was my awareness and the information <clears throat> that I seemed to share with the Lemurians when we met was that winter solstice 2020 was we all had an expectation that the shift was taking place. Here's the news. It did take place. For those of us that are in alignment, we're feeling that's why I can slip in and out of the next dimension easily. Don't like coming back. Um, but you can now. The conditions on the planet are such that one day, those of us that are awake, are going to have one thought and intent and an awareness of what is around us, you're going to open your eyes and something brand new is going to be around you. And nothing is left but this sense inside of yourself that, holy cow, unconditional love is here. The fourth dimension is not one we spend a lot of time in anyway. It's where you clear your karma. So most of us that are feeling like I am, our karma has been cleared long ago. In the fall, <clears throat> last year, I was so done with humanity. I'm just watching this unravel and not really focusing my attention where it would better suit everyone else. Excuse me. When I began in a, to become an observer of myself and my own behavior and where my attention was going, because let's face it, that's the most precious gift you have, your attention and where you spend it. Don't let anyone else steal your attention. They somehow suck your sovereignty out of you without you even knowing that it's happening. If we're going to hang on to free will and make it benefit us and everyone else around us, we need to be aware of where our thoughts are going. So if you believe, like I do, that your thoughts become things, that becomes a very tangible thing manifestation for those in alignment is like rocket ship these days. So be careful about where your thoughts are going, because what you're thinking is what the universe loves to return to you. Well, okay. With that being said, we can <laughs> certainly understand the vibration that you were in when you were in Mount Shasta and when you met a Lemurian who invited you inside to tell us, you were yes. having a multi-dimensional experience. Your heart was open. What was the date? When did this happen? I, I want to say it was July 26th. I had oh, arrived. 20, this was 21? during COVID, 2020. So this was two years ago. Yeah, summer before last. And you um, went to I, Mount, you know what? There was a lot of light workers who went to Mount Shasta in July of 2020. Um, Very I know that now in retrospect, but that's just, it's a, it's a call. Uh, once you connect with Shasta and my intent wasn't to go there, Lauren, we, um, we had been on lockdown at COVID since you know, like February. And I'm saying, well, my son, circumstances were such that I did not end up in Nevada. I ended up in California with my son. There I was stuck. We were just stuck. So there were lots of complications I had in addition to all that. I'm still driving around with Louisiana plates and a driver's license in California uh, because that's where I was last. And until the dust settled, 
when we could finally get out, I just needed to get back to nature. I need grounding. I need to get out where I, I see things others don't um, mm. and take whatever I'm supposed to get from that and let that expand. My first impulse was to go to the four corners, you know, Colorado, Utah. And, oh, my God, there's plenty of places to go. And okay. as I was making those plans, you would see on Facebook that many of these places weren't even going to be open. The very next thought in my head was Mount Shasta. Don't know how it got placed there. Don't care. Um, in the end, I, my son and I agreed I was going to go for a week, scope it out, hike, you know, to see what it was like. Uh, and then maybe we would connect the week after that in Reno or Tahoe or something because he wasn't working either. We would figure it out. Well, at, it, as the end of the first week neared, there was just something that tugged me there. And mind you, I was hiking every day like I was in my 20s. I am not in my 20s. There, it wasn't until the end of the week that during one of the last hikes, someone, an older couple, a couple cars down, had, had remarked on their physical energy and how they felt. And it wasn't until that moment that I went, holy shit. Interesting. I should be tired every other day and mm -hmm. recover from these. But every day I went out and hiked again off trail because I don't follow trails. I want to go find those vortexes that no one else has stumbled over yet. I was doing that every day. Five weeks turned, one week turned into five. I stayed there for five weeks and just continued to hike in different areas every day. By the wow. end of it <clears throat> was this opportunity for the mountain to open up. Wow. Almost as if they knew that that was coming to the end of your time there. There were several steps in retrospect <clears throat> that I understand now that took place in order for that to happen. It mm -hmm. began and actually, no, it didn't begin in Sedona. It began there that day. Um, I, I was wandering out hoping to run into an ascended master like St. Germain. Intent. It wasn't unreasonable. It's happened there. So mm -hmm. I was open and alone and the circumstances were such that, hey, this kind of communication, I am open and ready. Well, it wasn't St. Germain that I ended up seeing. I was sitting against the mountain, against rock, against the brush on top of it. And in a moment it was there and in a moment, another moment it wasn't. I could yeah. feel air coming from behind me and a sensation of, this was a little afternoon. So shadows were starting to cast under me, over me, like had a canopy. And when I turned around to see what this phenomenon was, there was a, a hole where I'd been my ass was right there and now there's a little rise that goes into somewhere down and I can begin to see as my eyes adjusted there's a body there's somebody down there somebody down there what in through the passageway when I turned around this hole was probably nine feet um, around and like it, it had been carved into the rock and it followed what appeared to be a lava tube. A lava tube. Okay. Wow. All right. And so then what happens next? Were you startled? <clears throat> Were you excited? Hey, because if we get too excited, things won't happen. I'm, I'm not that, uh, I wasn't that, that excitable. I can't say that there wasn't, I don't want to call it anxiety. There was just a different kind of energy that pulsed that was so welcome. Wow. You just want more of it, but you know, our 3D minds don't understand any of this. Um, and I'm going to be the toughest person you've ever met to convince on anything. Guides were sent so that, Lowell, when the time came for you to awaken, you'll understand it for yourself. And every time I've documented an adventure it has been with that in mind that when I found this <laughs> ascension handbook through means that just it ended up in my lap as the next person who was supposed to pass this information along because master Tony is no longer whoever put this thing together in 2012 was profound oh my god you want to understand the ascension process here it is 
And when I was, was presented the information, it was presented from my guides to prove it to me. And they did. And since then, now that I understand the magic between what the Ascension Handbook had it included, because it talked about chakra alignment and how you make your alignment with everything else. And then what happens in the next realm, when you can see from that perspective, all the tools for people to understand it are there. It was my job to bring it to the world next. And as it was, uh, the only alterations I made when I found it is you could tell he was Australian in his kind of perspective. And there were some words that just needed to be changed so that I really, would really understood what the terms were, but it wasn't my job to change it. The guides put that stuff in my hands to pass along to everybody else. It was a tool. And it's triggered plenty of people since. All right, we're going to go into more detail there. And I can hear the audience and the viewers with so many questions here. But I wanted to ask first about soul contract. Have you looked at your soul contract here with this mission and even your time as a Lemurian? Because in some aspect, it could be an aspect of you. Um, so I wonder if you've contemplated that or what your thoughts are about that connection. I have. When, when the opportunity to come return to Shasta last April 1st, there were a series of masters I was going to meet within a four-day period in April that were there in the end, that showed up to, they played a role in my ascension process. <clears throat> I, during that four days, was around the Mitchell Hedges skull, crystal skull, three times, three times. Who gets an opportunity to do that even once, Loren? Much less three times. And the first two times, I was reluctant to take care, uh, take advantage of the opportunity. And here's why. Um, I was in a room of individuals that were filming um, information for, first of all, Ruben Langdon was doing work on um, an episode for um, his series, Interview with ED. I was there because he'd heard about what had happened with me the year before, thought there was an episode there. So that was the intent. But when I got there, he was, had been traveling and Mount Shasta was the last stop for him and Bill Holman as they were moving around the country and filming what is going to end up being like a two and a half hour documentary on the Coast of Skull. It was supposed to end in Mount Shasta and here comes Lowell. How the hell did that happen? All of a sudden, now I'm involved over the next two days filming in sacred locations with the skull in tow with other masters that were there. Um, Heather and um, Matthew Bueno, who lived there. Matthew's family is indigenous, has been there for generations. He's had experiences with um, Arcturians regular. He's had experiences and his family has with um, Sasquatch people who live there. Yeah, they showed up on the last day I didn't understand what I was hearing until Matthew explained it to us later. Um, then Bill had the skull. The first time I sat around it, it, his energy was unmistakable. I was sitting on a couch over here and all of a sudden I saw Bill get up and on a little table over there, he said a skull that I have seen somewhere before. I was looking at her profile and I went, I don't know where I've seen that before. And I knew nothing about crystal skulls, nothing about uh -huh. them before this day. And I'm wow. a crystal guy, so it would be natural that I would have some curiosity about it. Had that day, that instance, um, <clears throat> he sat across from it. And he's a wonderful facilitator when it comes to that because it takes a real gift for someone to help you connect to what information is here for you without placing their own personal intent on it and just allowing you to connect with this magnificent artifact. When it was facing him, 
he said, I want you to put your hands around it. And just as it, the energy expands, just let it go. Well, my arms would no longer stretch out from the aura of this thing put off that I was connected to. And it was facing Bill. Then Bill turned it around. And when you can see down those two openings in the eyes, you can see how you can be drawn into and to carried out other timelines easily. What, I don't want to say I was scared, but I was aware that there were 12 other people around me. This is not the time to do this. And so I kind of stepped back, but you couldn't help but, oh, my God, I need to explore what this is. In the end, by the end of that time I was there, when I did finally get to sit on um, the Star of David, having it face me for 40 minutes and I let go, yeah, it showed me it was in Laris. A fascinating, really, really quite fascinating. All right, so we're going to go back to the Tello story because... <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot there. And the spiritual work that you're doing um, is is an indicator of what we can all experience. And our our we have a beloved channel, Ju Judy Kelly, who has been channeling uh, Adama from Telos and Mikos, the librarian in, in Telos, and the Andarian crystals for decades. And she was introduced to me through Diane Robbins. And oh. What a gem of I love Diane. She right. was wonderful and opened her home to me the first time I went to visit her. We've stayed in touch and you know she's just getting older and it's just a little more difficult for her to um, just spend their own time. But believe me, when the subject to tell us comes up, that woman lights up. And she has been connected in a ways that I wanted to explore so that she can help me understand my connection. Lovely. I just love her. Yes. And she's been channeling the Telosians. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we're talking about is a connection that we can have with the Lemurians, how we can call them in. And um, we'll talk about that more later, but let's go back to your story. So, so here you are, there's this opening in the mountain and you see this other being what happens next? You go in. Can you describe that story? <laughs> yes. How what I heard gone? next was, do you wish to see Telos? Okay. That was what I heard next. And so I kind of stepped up because it was almost a little rise. And then you could see where um, there was light that was coming from the other end. From my perspective, it appeared as though this person was about my height. And I really couldn't tell any more than that. As I started to move down, and maybe I want to say uh, it was 30 or 40 feet down from where I was, just to kind of give your perspective. But it was dark and my eyes were adjusting when I could finally make sense of what that was uh, and was close enough to see this individual. He said, um, it's uh, stunning. This person was at least a foot taller than I am, and I'm six feet tall. Well, in, in reality, they're over eight feet tall. Wow. Um, so magnificent very tall. things. Uh, yes. He was wearing white and had these colored ribbons. I want to call them ribbons because I don't know what else to call them. The garb he wore was white that day. Um, but these other colored things, I don't know if they had some significance, whether that was reminiscent of you know some kind of spiritual rank he held i don't know they just they, they got your attention um he said well you can call me alex so that'll easy be easy to remember that's my son's name he says yeah we know about your son you know follow me so we begin down this road and he's tall as we get closer to the bottom of this um incline you can tell there's light coming from the other end so I don't know how far we walked. Um, it wasn't very long, very far. Uh, we weren't really sharing anything because I was just trying to take it in. But I did have the wherewithal to kind of look where I came from. And whatever light would have been behind me from the opening, yeah, there's no light behind me anymore. And whatever light source is coming was from below. As that opened up into wherever I want to call this a staging area. 
And when you stepped in, there were five more lava tubes straight across from you that just they must have gone somewhere. But immediately to our left, when we went in this area, there was this platform, um, maybe six foot by six foot. I can't tell you what it was made out of. Uh, I want to call it crystal, but maybe it was. I, I don't know. It wasn't metal. It wasn't wood. Um, uh, but it had uh, the appearance of like two bucket seats on it. Not only was there, there was, some, there was another one over there and over there, there was another one of these things. Well, Alex, in the meantime, while I was taking it in, steps around and sits on the other side and invites me to sit next to him. And as soon as I do, this thing levitates immediately and off toward the middle tube we go. Now, there's no sensation like you would feel wind in your hair going by. There's no sensation that there's any movement, but you know you're going somewhere. <coughs> from the other end, which wasn't that far, you could begin to see light coming from the other end. And as we got closer and the light was, there was more of the light coming into this tube, shall we say, it's starting to light up the crystals that are embedded into it. And it's like going through a kaleidoscope of colors while light is hitting it and continuing to change its refraction every you know, little instance you move. It was amazing. And as caught up in that as I got, when we finally hit the opening, we're in the city of Telos. So he takes us up to, you've seen these um, cityscape photographs that somebody has taken from a drone or whatever it was i'm looking at this perspective of tell us from where i was the city is circular in its layout in the middle of it is this incredible white pyramid that they say is large enough to hold ten thousand. there's a capstone at the top of it that was given to them by venus and what i didn't know that day that my wonderful friend Diane Robbins told me is that depending on the day of the week, the capstone changes color. I was there on Sunday. Sundays are white. Hence, the garb he was wearing was white. Most of the garb you saw, the Lemurians, are, it was that. If it had it been Saturday, it would have been purple. Had it been Wednesday, it would have been green. Uh, it was amazing to understand that after. Um, but these are things that you just learn after it's part of the assimilation process after so that you know, our poor little human 3d brains want to label it so that we can package it we can tell others about it in terms that they can understand there are only limitations to what we can express because what i can see color spectrums especially today audio sensations are so off what everybody else is aware of and can see uh, there are portals if you're open to it. I'm back in an area in Arizona where you know, if I went outside and spent the time on focusing in the sky, it's easy to see that type of activity. Uh, there's no question in my mind, uh, are there extraterrestrials around? Are we, they are on the planet? It's unmistakable to me now. So I don't waste my time on that. I don't really spend my energy and focus on forms and who they were and where they came from. I can tell you that I knew I spent time as a Pleiadian. I came when humanity was at the beginning of the root races, which is where the Lemurians play in all of this. Humanity was seeded from many other places, um, benevolent advanced beings who came with lots of wonderful attributes to put into this blending pot. Earth was an experiment in 3D duality. You wanna understand physicality, take the fall and here we go. No one ever told us it was gonna take us eons to get out of it because we just didn't understand how far we had to fall to understand the differences and the lessons we signed up to learn though. But that was part of our job. We came here to help the universe evolve. This were, these were the lessons I played out. 
I don't know who I was before until recently, because until people can wrap their arms around the idea that they've had other lives. Mm. And now you can understand that you've reincarnated and every time you did, you signed up with new lessons you want to, to learn on behalf of not just the universe, but for the collective as well. We thank you every time you learn a lesson on our behalf. Thank God we didn't have to do that. You did it for us and the collective benefits. So by the time new earth comes and this collective law of one we all know we're connected to one another so why in the world would we want anything to happen to anybody else that kind of collective thinking is scoots you to fifth dimension i kind of said we pass through four earth will be in the fourth dimension for a while but holy cow when you get there your ability to manifest explodes there's no longer a delay with your intent as long as it's in alignment with the vibration around. In telos, um, people are given the places they live. None of them are the same, from what I understand, but that's because you manifest the things that you need. It's that simple. So in telos, manifest their house, and what would their house look like? Uh, I didn't see inside, so I can't speak to that. But you have to imagine that when you can make anything you want and your body's already crystalline, that there are many things that are going to be different. The, the, when I first understood that when I saw their hydroponic gardens, that that fed the populace, I went, how in the world do you do that? Well, step back for a moment and think of who they were. There's a reason they look flawless. And I don't know if they're hundreds or thousands of years old. Who knows? All I can tell you is that these people do not look like this. They don't age. Um, Beautiful. Their bodies are already crystalline in nature. So think of that. And what are there's no energy that you take in that you don't totally use. We don't worry about going to the bathroom anymore. You use all that energy in different ways. So this carbon form, we're done learning these physical lessons. Now we're morphing into the crystalline that's already inside of us. Oh, there's light. That's what all of this is about, is we're connecting to a different form of photon energy, elevated. This is what the planet's taking in and every sentient life being around it. We're all mutating our DNA to wake up those t- 10 um, junk <laughs> strands. It's not junk. It's just inactive stuff that's getting activated right now. There are accelerants and Andara crystals are one of those um, that can help with that process, but you don't need them. When it's your time to awaken, you will. So back to the city and what it looked like. It was just magnificent. There was, um, there was one building off to the right that got my attention that was kind of circular. It had a big opening that you went into like the biggest French doors you've ever seen, but you could tell that there were crystal panels around this circular room. I just, I, I don't know why it, I noticed it, but I did. As we hovered down before we, he was going to take me down to see the hydroponic gardens, he was explaining uh, a lot about the structure um, of how they are governed, if you want to call it that. But the, the collective, they don't have government the way we think of it. They have 13 people that sit on the council. Um, six that are masculine, six that are feminine. And Adama is the head priest. There's your council. But you got to wonder, uh, the 13th vote, how many times that it really has to come wrong. Um, the, there was a vibration that went through this place that was unmistakable. That was a physical sensation. Uh, I'll save that till we, when we get back to this room I was just referring to because it was important. But as we came down to hover where I could make eye contact with five or six people as we were coming through i knew that i knew them from somewhere and that's they knew me too 
after that happened, there were two people who have come across my path whose faces I saw that day. And I recognized them now. One is a friend of mine, Kathy. And um, the other is Barbara. Who you met out in um, world. Out in the rest of the world. Yeah. Kathy came across my path when I met Mickey Magic. And Barbara was part of the whole Skull Squad endeavor. Um, She was a girlfriend of one of the producers. Seen her there. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Was any conversation had about what we can do in, or how are we treating the earth? Did, did, you know, do they have advice for us on that? Um, No. Humanity is playing themselves out. The the last contact that um, I understand has taken place between Lumerians, other than there are some that live in Mount Shasta that just keep to themselves. Matthew, after the fact, had been the guy who said, you know why you were invited in, don't you? And I go, no, help me out here. He says, You're one of them. Mm, yes. That's why it was you. So yes. this wasn't that you came back to make this connection from their world to ours, from this side. This was part of what my agreement was yes. to come back through this incarnation was to be the MCR in this side. That I came from there. And now that I understood what role I played back there, oh God, I was a high priest back then. I was an alchemist. I was a magician. I understood how to transmute negative energy and light like that. And once you understand that concept, and you leave those light droppings behind while um, be- people just look in your direction and they don't understand what it is, but there's something there. There's something to his aura. I just, I'm attracted to, I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. It's light. It's light. It's light. It's light. I've ingested light. <laughs> That's a story for later on today, but yeah, I don't know why Loren, how things unfolded for me the way that they did. All I can tell you is that they did. Yes, they did. And it's interesting that they knew you and your son. Did you get a chance to ask them how they knew you? Because you just know. All right. No. Yeah. It's no. multi. That's where we get multidimensional. So the mm-hmm. feeling was unmistakable. So this feeling is unmistakable. Did they give it, is that what they exuded to everyone, a level of respect (laughs) for everyone? Can you see that happening on our world, on on this outside? Vibrations have got to match. And the blind. When your vibration matches that what's around you, you take on all of its attributes and you get to actually witness what's there. When your vibration's low, you can't see things in the next realm. And that is what I get to see every day. Colors that are vivid. Two days ago, I got up and I, I've i kind of been, I don't want to say sequestered, but guides have been, it's time for you to be quiet, Lowell. So I had uh, met with about 10 people in Vegas and kind of brought them up to speed. And then there's this lull where... Um, dealing with my, this new tribe member and assist in his passing, that was next for me. Because in the meantime, I'm kind of going with the flow. Show me where I'm supposed to go next. Because I know you didn't bring me this far, leave me here. Um, There's just times that your guides just say, sit back. So yesterday in preparation, as I said, I was listening to you and Judy and listened to it in its entirety and started to, oh my God, we're about to crack this open all over again. Yeah. Um, what happened on those interviews with Danny was hard to manage right now in trying to respond to everyone that wants to hear more. And that's great. Let's go back to tell us. The conversation at the end of all this, and I made mention to this circular room here, uh, that was where we came back. 
after the tour of the facilities, we ended up in this opening. And that was the first place I saw some light codes etched into two panels just on the east side of this opening that I had seen before. The first day I arrived in Shasta, it was too late to really do any hiking. It was mid-afternoon, so I checked into where I was going to be staying, and I thought I'll just walk up and down the main street, and I'll you know, see what's where and why. Walked by a little shop called Blue Star Child Gallery, and it had these colorful little drawings that just drew you in. Well, when I got inside, I could see that there were shoot covers, and then I equated them with COVID which I wasn't ob objecting to, but I thought I'm just gonna continue to walk up and down the street, but this is a place I wanted to come back. And as I had noticed that, as I was turning to leave, I saw this drawing, perfectly symmetrical, 10 feet tall, three feet wide, that I understand later had been hand drawn without the benefit of straight edges, curves, tools, no, no, this is drawn by hand. And there's not just one. The walls are covered with it. These are light codes. Incredible. So I was going to come back and explore that further. It turns out this is Haruko, a lovely little Japanese girl um, whose gifts pour out into these things. So her shop it was filled with these light codes. When you make your way in, she's got a main area as you come in, and these are lined everywhere. Um, not just this, these are light codes that have come to her that she's illustrated for the rest of us to benefit from. But when she just lets her playful side out, her cosmic side, that kid, oh my God, those illustrations are entirely different. So I've seen some of these creations, which take months to draw. And now she's going back to color them. There, she is expanding. When I first met her, she was so quiet. Now she plays a flute, she sings. Oh my God, this girl's gifts are unmistakable. But as you made your way back through her shop, there was kind of a middle section with some of these. My favorite is Atlantis and Lemuria emerged and it wraps around a wall. It's so big. Mm. There's one final room where there, I believe, are now five light codes. When I went there, there were four. Those two light codes that I was explaining, I saw etched into crystals, were inside her room on the right and left-hand side of the door. When I went back and saw that room, the day that I went back to revisit, I asked her, I just, you wanted to spend more time in the room. I could see that there was a pillow in the middle of the room so I went up and asked, would you mind if I sit in there and just meditate for a while? She goes, no, no, no. That's what the room is designed for. So 20 minutes later, I come out in tears. I'm overwhelmed by what has been left there in my impression. I don't know what it was, where I'm going to see it, what it means, but I was moved. And then I got to tell us and I saw them right there. This one's for New Earth light codes this is the blueprint for the new angelic code human blueprint there they are when i remarked to alex i said i've seen these somewhere before he goes hey yeah, to ruko's work they're accurate and so we etched them here this is the council chamber this circular room has a big circular table it's the only wood i've seen in any of this place but the table is what you could it's got crystals embedded into it um, their idea of gold and silver they use as trim. <laughs> Crystal power is what's in here. And so um, there are 13 chairs around this table. And as I came in, that sensation I was referring to is like um, now it hits you in your core. You can feel like this energetic love hug that just keeps pressing into you. And all you wanna do is just kind of melt into this love. <laughs> well, it's emanating throughout this room. It's just crazy. As I'm taking this sensation and how wonderful it feels, here come five more people. I can tell it's a dama in the middle and this guy's at least nine feet tall. 
he's taller than everybody else by at least a head. And then there are feminine energies, four of them, who are flanking him and they're moving in our direction. I'm invited to take seat at the table and they spread themselves around. Women, um, Adama and another woman and then a woman and Alex and another woman. Each one of them described who they were, what they did. And I can't remember any of them except the very first woman, Shiama. She was notable because when the time came for them for this exchange, she kind of chaired this meeting, right? I'm about to find out why I was invited. They went on to say that um, they understood that I can hold fifth dimensional consciousness. And so this experience, um, I was capable of having. I didn't really understand that. Back then I thought, well, yeah, I can understand higher dimensional perspectives, but it didn't play out like this. Two, they had heard I was a protector of Gaia. That came from an ayahuasca journey two years earlier where I saw a new earth and what my role and what it was going to be when the shift takes place. I'm staying and that's the role I play. My first obligation to Gaia is to her, to earth and all the sentient beings on it after that. Humanity will benefit, but I'm here to protect the planet and whatever she needs, that's what I'm here to do. Um, we can get in discussions of both and who he is and what that consciousness that's about to return is, but this is a little premature for me to begin to have these discussions, but he's returning. Toth. So. Toth. Beautiful. Yes, yes I, uh, Daniel ha Rama Hoffman works closely with Toth and is guiding a whole host of light workers in bringing their legacy worth forward. Wow. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say as well, we're going to do a mastery empowerment course with you. That's a way for people to learn from you, learn the lessons, the teachings that you wish to offer in how we learn to slip into higher dimensions, to hold fifth dimensional consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it can also be in Lemuria as well. It's beautiful. No doubt. Look, you can tell us, you can I tell don't want to take anything that. away from that experience. It was miraculous. My perspective has shifted only in that I can choose to go back there anytime I wish. Now, there are things I will be honest about. There are things going on in that cavity that we call telos. So people understand the vernacular between them. It's Lemurians that live in Mount Shasta. Telos is the name of the city. So as a city resident, I am a Telosian, but we're Lemurians. Back when I was referring to when humanity was being seeded, Lemurians were one of the first root races. So here is where they took all that energy and what they knew from where they came. They're going to use all that collective energy to help humanity get use technology and bring the planet as she evolves to the places where her consciousness rises, everything matches. And this earth experiment is being watched across the galaxy. This is important for others to see what the outcome is going to become for humanity before we get to stages of consciousness we have never been to yet. Fourth and fifth dimension, we have not been there yet. And here we're at the doorstep. Whatever the phenomenon that's going to take place, and if you didn't pay attention to yesterday's solar activity, <laughs> let me just bring you up to speed that. Um, SpaceX had sent up 49 satellites. 40 of them were taken out in this last solar storm. We've always heard that it was going to be possible that some kind of solar phenomenon um, could start to take out satellites. Here's your sign. 40 of them were taken out in one fell swoop just like that. Wow. All right. For clarity, today is February 11th. This show Correct. is broadcasting on 2 2 
two, two oh two two. What a beautiful day for the two 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 codes. And that's a whole different conversation, but very interesting. We have been feeling solar activity. Very, very interesting. Okay. I kind of left you hanging in the council okay, chamber, so ahead. let's wrap that up. Yes, please the continue. The third reason that I was invited was that um, when the shift took place, the Lemurians have been waiting to reintegrate with surface people forever. They weren't going to do that. I think the last conversations anybody had about any kind of contact physically was in the 90s. Uh, that's all I can find. And believe me, I've been trying to hunt this information down like a dog with a bone. Um, the time has finally come for people like me to start to share their stories. And I was like everybody else until I woke up and found out what we're really here to do. So it's, I expect nothing in return. There are things that the universe will give me that I've asked for that are for everyone's highest good. Um, but this isn't about clicks and it's not about body. That's what I was trying to explain. <clears throat> I, I had no idea how I was gonna present this physically, but I knew it had to be done physically. I know now that that'll be great in small groups, <clears throat> uh, but that's one at a time in them. And Kumu, uh, a guide who's come along in the last year, uh, I shared with her the first time I helped someone find their light and open it. And she says, well, that's one. She said, I'm glad I'm not the only one doing the work anymore because she's been here clearing for a while um, but that I was Lemurian that when the time came they would they hoped that I would serve as an emissary well I, I didn't realize at the time lol it's freaking what you signed up for until this experience assimilated more later and I could kind of put things into perspective now um, no this was just kind of a, a brilliant little thing where this was your trigger pal here is these people waking you up to whatever rank you held within them they're waiting for your alchemy skills and your magic to show back up here on this side so that when the time came that they were going to make themselves available for everyone that i would help that when they heard her coming from lowell or people like lowell god damn you can't deny that this guy's telling the truth because that's all that there is. Now take it for what it's worth. It, you don't believe me? I can't, it's not my job to convince you. It's my job for those that are ready and awake for whatever trigger I provide for them, that then it's their turn to wake up. And whatever information I hold is yours and I'll be happy to help anybody get there. Um, Cause that's my role now. I've touched light. That's the next story. Um, it's inside of me now. It's my job to help others have that same sensation. And when people begin to understand that I can have these dimensional experiences, <laughs> there's nothing to do in disclosure that can squash any of that. You can't stop somebody from having the experiences I'm having. Um, there's no fear in any of this. The beings that have been around us are benevolent in nature. And I can't speak for experiences people have had with dark energy. I know that it exists. That has not where I placed my attention, nor what I was directed to spend it. Um, I carry light. I carry lots of light now. And so it's my job to transmute negative energy into light wherever I go. Um, I'm curious to see how much longer I get to do it in this particular physical realm, but I know I'm here for the transition. 
it was going to happen within my lifetime. Yes, I think we're all feeling it. And one breath at a time, we are shifting. I was one of the many light workers for 11, 11, 11, and 12, 12, 12. I went to Peru. We literally thought there was going to be a love fest. That energetic heart hug that you felt, yeah. you thought that was going to happen on 12, 21, 2012. And I was depressed for, I'd like to say weeks <laughs> afterwards. And my husband was like, are you ever going to be happy again? And then I realized something did happen there. And it happened one heart at a time. Exactly. Fun. It did Don't happen. Do what you're doing because we're stories trying like to figure yours, out. Yeah. In our little human D that we're trying to figure out how in my human mind do I make sense of this? And when we can't, we just kind of flail. Now, part of us wants to, our ego says, yeah, I told you, it wasn't right. That was bullshit because your intuition still pushed you forward and said, we know you don't understand it yet. Just go with the flow and believe me, it'll all unfold the way it's supposed to as long as you are open. And when you are, we'll show you the next little nugget that'll be extraordinary to you. And when you get that one, we'll show you the next one that's extraordinary to you. And um, then you'll tell others because they can't stop you from having these extraordinary experiences. When it happened to me in this past August, somebody had suggested that to me. That Lowell, maybe you're the first guy that they're no longer going to question, that the information is going to get out there. And, you know, you can't deny the things that have happened with you because you have freaking pictures of it. When those were taken and they said, these are for your portfolio, I went, what the hell does that mean? Later on, it became very clear what they were. I've taken pictures on my adventures always. And then I met a guide who came along who happened to be a hybrid and took pictures of the phenomenon around me. She called in light and um, it was supposed to happen the way it happened. So oh. fascinating. Yes, fascinating. We are really looking forward to more time with you more understanding. We are almost out of time for our show today, but those pictures. So can you share those pictures as well? They're Not on my website. Show. Oh, they're on your website. Beautiful. I, um, 40 K F T view, 40,000 foot view.com is the website. And if you go back and you read, there were two stories about my multidimensional stories last summer. It will help tell the story of the things you've heard in Danny's interviews and whatnot. If you reach the end of the second story, the connection and the password to the pictures is there. And they're there for people that want to understand it better. So here it is. Take it for what it's worth. I'm not, don't need to be convinced anymore. Someone took pictures of me in those circumstances. I'm not supposed to be the only one. Yes. All right. So um, as we wrap up our conversation for now, I want to give you time to share any other aspects about that story, as well as how we can make contact with them. Find your alignment first. When you do, then you're in a position to be aware of all the things that are going on around you. Then you find some sacred ground. When I went to Shasta looking for energetic portals, um, I found them energetically, but I was still in my little 3D body. And in looking back on it, I'm kind of surprised I found them energetically that way. But I was kind of wired differently. And you know, I just felt those kind of energies before. I had not refined it to the degree that it is now and what it's blossomed into. Um, but now when I get out in nature, I see these energy signatures. They look like heat coming off a sidewalk with form. It's you see them there, unmistakable now. 
you just have to step into that aura and take advantage of what's been left behind by somebody else who left awesome intentions behind. It's always an energy exchange. All the more reason why I can't emphasize more for people to find their alignment. Because once you do, you can connect to the things that are around you. And when you do, it's magnificent. That is going to be the focus of a mastery empowerment course with you. Finding our alignment to move into other realms. Beautiful. Tell us about how you left on this journey and what was that like? And then integrating that in your 3D <laughs> world. Uh, at the end of it all, really when they laid out their case and asked me if I would be willing to be an emissary, uh, I, I stumble at first because I don't need attention and from and affirmations from others i've had plenty of that through my careers uh, but i was smart enough to understand i didn't do any of that on my own then when i recognized my teams and what they could do and you nurtured that kind of power and what we could do together holy shit that's where the juice came and my career came from me always um, so that's just kind of been who my essence was and i, I didn't really understand how to treat people any different um, Somebody asked me the other day if I had ever been um, discriminatory, and I would never had. There was an instance when I was younger with a black friend who lived in the neighborhood, and I didn't equate color with anything until he came into my house, and my father found out about it, and dad was not the same place where I was. I thought for a long time, Loren, that that told me who my father was. No, no, no. It told me who I was. And what I thought of tolerance and who everybody else is connected to everybody else. Everybody. We just have an individual special gift that no one else has. All of us do. We weren't meant to be cookie cutter. We weren't meant to do that. Um, if it did, we don't need lots of replication of people that could all do the same thing. We signed up for different lessons to learn on behalf, behalf of the collective. And when we do, that just benefits us all. But we need to step out of all the muck in the third dimension. And with the drama that's going on and all the distractions going on, it's hard to maintain focus um, the closer that gets to your own little realm. So it's more important than ever Sarah, for light workers to be reminded of just observe yourself. Be mindful of what you put out to the universe because your manifestation skills couldn't be higher. The conditions on the planet and everything for ascension are right. Yes. Mm. Thank you for that. That is very promising and inspiring and a good reminder. And also why we always say, keep your eye on the prize of new earth. We are in an opportune time for creating new systems from the heart light and tuning in to the higher self for guidance. I know that's why we're all here. And if all each of us do is get ourselves connected within like that to our higher self and help others do the same, that's the shift right there. Right. That's where it's gonna be really quick in a shift. And I've heard from some that, you know, it might not happen all at once, but it can happen here right now with a vibration. We've also heard from the Arcturians that new earth is a vibration. So there we can do this at any moment. What Correct. are your thoughts about new earth happening quickly or seeing it? Um. I, I have seen it. It's here right now, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful realm with um, there's nothing man-made there at all. Nothing man-made is going to carry over. But you have incredible manifestation abilities and technology access to things that we think are magic. Um, that we've had the ability to do it uh, uh, already. Um, 
you're going to understand um, with the ability to master um, gravity and that sensation. You think for a minute that the pyramids were really built by slaves dragging. <laughs> Those beings understood how to manipulate gravity and moving, you know, any, anything of any size was effortless to them. The key was understanding mathematics and um, um, sacred geometry uh, and using that to your advantage. And so the pyramids weren't so much sacred places as I understand it, as they were portals to places that could go other places. Their alignment and all of you, you can read the mathematics of all of it. There's sense to all of it, all of it. And if, when we pay attention to that, so we don't need to understand it. We just need to benefit from it. It was placed here for us to reawaken. Um, I, one of the journeys I took in August was Egyptian. A part of me that I didn't understand um, but it certainly made sense. And in this particular place, on that particular day, I saw myself lifting the top of the Great Pyramid out of the way to open the halls of Amenti to everyone, including the Emerald Tablets, including those that have been forbidden to humanity for as long as they have been. They will not be forbidden the next time. Here is things that have been left behind by Philip, as a matter of fact, for us to advance to the next levels. Happy evolving, everyone. Happy <laughs> advancing. This is what is in store for all of us as we raise our vibration, get in alignment, pay attention, and live in our heart light. Lowell Johnson, thank you, thank you, thank you for your light work. It is tremendous. And thank you for sharing, for being bold and for sharing and for stepping up to be that Lemurian emissary. Very good. Thank uh, thanks, you. Lauren. I appreciate every opportunity to just reach out to the next person. Um, your audience is ready for this information. And that's why it's all the more important for us to get it out there as quickly as we can. Awesome. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you for listening to this quantum conversation. And thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart. As we raise our own vibration, we raise the vibration of the planet. This show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love. Access all Quantum Conversations, special offers from our guests, and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste.